Hello folks and welcome uh, back. Hopefully you're here to learn about how to read architectural drawings, which is what we're going to be covering in this video. And we've got a nice little project here um, that we're going to be kind of using uh, to look at the drawings for this instance. And this is an actual project. It's not a project that I've been a part of or anything like that. Uh, it's just, you know, I found the drawings on the internet and some actual pictures of the finished product. So, uh, looking at architectural plans, I'm going to take you all through, uh, first of all, the overall first floor plan. So, a lot of times you'll see overall drawings if the footprint of the building is something that's extremely large or something that the architect would rather uh, break up into sections. And so that's what we have here. And what you're going to see really from the overall floor plan, floor, overall first floor plan, what you're going to see is uh, basically all the, you know, all of the different features of the building. You have your entrance right here. And then uh, you have your gym, gymnasium. So that's going to be a big part. You have your kind of looks like administrative offices that are going to be there. This is a long corridor. Uh, you have your dining over here, the serving area. So all of that. Uh, is over there and then you have like it looks like maybe a library or something and then um uh, rehearsal rooms and stuff and then back here is this where yeah so this is where your classes are the grades and this is of course two stories this uh building but um we're just going to be looking at the first floor plan so uh one thing that we do want to note here in the key plan this is where you can see what the um where the break lines are, where the match lines are, that's what they're called, match lines. These right here, these dotted lines, those are called match lines. And they're basically reflective of this little key plan right here that's showing you as we go through the drawings, what the drawings are going to refer to as area A, area B, and area C. And so we're going to see these borders uh, carry on as we look at the uh, area plans as we dig into the first floor plan. So let's go ahead and uh, get into that. All right, so this is what they're calling the partial first floor plan area A. <clears throat> it's in a 1 8 inch scale. So every eighth inch here equals one foot um, in real actual life. And uh, it's showing you here in gray what, what we're looking at right now. Now, um, you know, We'll kind of look at the general plan notes really briefly, br really briefly. I sound like I can't talk. Uh, we'll look through the general plan notes really briefly. And all I really want to show you is what they are. But maybe in another video, we'll actually dig into uh, some of the general plan notes and some other key notes that you you may see. But for now, let's just take a brief look. See. All right. Took me a second to get zoomed in there. So here are the general plan notes. Now, just reading this right here is going to, you know, uh, help you understand what we're seeing below. So general notes applicable to all drawings, items and conditions detailed, noted or otherwise identified on one of these sections or details are applicable and binding to all other sections and details for identical are similar conditions so that's a whole lot of words and what it basically is saying is that um, the notes that you see below apply to all of the drawings unless noted otherwise okay like number one here refer to sheet a-3.20 for wall types as referenced on plans with the diamond symbol unless reference otherwise all interior CMU walls, all interior CMU walls are the type A2, and all interior gypsum board walls are the type K1. So what it's saying here basically is it's letting you know what a typical wall, uh, how it's identified as. So for instance, they're including typical CMU walls, and they're going to be noted on the drawings as A2. So. Uh, and then you, it says the same thing about the interior gypsum walls, which are like your regular drywall. Uh, those are going to be denoted as K1. So looking at this wall right here, if we're looking at this wall, you can even see it says note one here. This diamond 
like the note just said, refers to a wall type. And this here is a wall type A2, uh, which the notes just told us was a CMU wall. You can also tell by the, uh, you know, the patterns here uh, as well. But um, other wall types are in here. And again, you can see them now denoted with the diamonds. So A2, A3, A1. And I, uh, let's see, I don't see any K types, but those are going to be just your regular old gypsum walls uh sort of like this here uh i think you know although i don't see oh there it is right there k1 so they're k1 so this and you know so they're not going to call out every wall so you don't have to go looking for k1 everywhere if you're like an estimator or if you're someone that needs to know what type of wall this is just seeing the k1 right there this is going to be typical and therefore that's why you have the general note now it doesn't apply to this wall type here. This one is saying is an X2. So that's why it has the need to drop here that this is an X2 wall or even that this is an A3 wall as opposed to an A2. Uh, so you, you all see, I don't want to beat that too much. All right, so let's uh, zoom back out and see what are some things that I would, as an estimator, look at on this project and be able to identify and things like that and you know I could flip back and forth to different plans and things you know but that's what I really would do I would you know refer to sections and elevations and finish schedules and all those sort of things along the way even check some MEP drawings uh, and you should do that but uh, for the sake of this video and keeping it you know relatively compact I'm just gonna be looking at this this drawing here and um, you can apply the same principles that, that I'll show you. So let's get into it. All right. So again, here's our intro. <laughs> intro. Here's our entrance. Our entrance is right here. Now it says C note on A-0.5. Uh, again, I'm not going to go and see what that says, but this is little symbol here is showing us the elevation for uh, the floor right here. And the elevation is at zero. So this is elevation zero. This is the flat. This is elevation zero here. So you may see some other areas and let's try to find some. You may see some other areas where uh, the slab steps up, like for instance, um, and I don't know, I haven't really dug into these drawings, but I would think, okay, here we go right here. You can see. So this is, this is a platform right here. It looks like we're in the dining hall. And if we were to look at um, this this uh, elevation right there, well, you know what? I take back everything I said. It is important as we're looking through these drawings to look at the sections if it leads us that way. And in this case, uh, it's not leading us to a section, but it's leading us to an elevation. So just for the reference, we're going to click on this elevation and go to page sheet A-6.4. And we're going to look at detail H5. Detail H5 right here. And so you can see the elevation change right there. Um, just like we just saw, the, 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 the reason for the elevation change is because there were some steps leading up to uh, this you know little area here that appears to be uh, for the children to maybe do some plays or presentations or something. All right, so there's the elevation change of one foot four right there. Okay, so let's go back and see what other things we can identify on here. Um, now this this uh, this pattern that you can see right here with the lines, so it calls this a floor mat entryway system recessed, and what that means is basically that the all of this flooring here is going to be. Um, you know pretty much even with the rest of the floor but because it's a thick floor mat it's going to have to the, the slab here is going to have to be a little bit lower than the rest of the slab here so that the floor mat can sit recessed and also therefore be even so that the students won't trip on their way out or in to the school so that's one important note uh, that's seen there and to look at now another thing and and you know we're just kind of skipping around but things that I'm pointing out here is uh, that there's an entry camp uh, in entry canopy and uh, I believe I have a picture of that as well uh, that entry canopy uh, is supported by steel columns and roof framing with high 
performance exterior coatings typical canopy so there are one two three four five six uh, steel columns that support the canopy and you can see the outline of the canopy here that's what that indicates that dot dashed line right there that is the extent of the canopy um and another thing about the canopy is that it also had it also cantilevers you see there's no support on the edge of it here uh, so it also cantilevers and we can you know i would want to know well how much does this cantilever over <clears throat> now with a program like this this is called blue beam you could actually scale and um you know trace from here to there and see uh from the center of that column all the way to the edge you can see what the uh dimensions are for the um you know for that overhang but um i don't have those capabilities here because you know i'm set up at home i'm not actually using any of my work stuff so uh, i don't have whatever cool features we have at work uh, but I guess with the unlocked version or something or the rather you would be able to do a few different things that I can do with this uh, pretty much do some annotations on here you see you can uh, cloud drawings you can put notes you can highlight things you can draw squiggly lines you can scale things you can count things you can take uh, you know some light quantity takeoff uh, with this program and that's not a, I'm not sponsored or anything uh, but if they do want to let let them know that I'm interested <coughs> all right all right so um i want to look at the wall look at you know the the um some of the structure of this building here um it's got a lot a lot of uh different a lot of different patterns that are all within this wall and so that's telling me that there are a lot of different layers this is a a pretty strong wall assembly also a note this right here that i just zoomed in FEC that stands for fire extinguisher cabinet. So at this location, there's going to be an a, a uh, you know a box cut out of the wall pretty much in order to install a fire extinguisher cabinet. Now this looks like this is a recessed fire extinguisher cabinet. They don't all have to be recessed. Uh, they could just be surface mounted, but this looks like it could be recessed. And so that's in the gym uh, area. And um, I do want to look at this wall section right here. That's another thing that I'll kind of take a detour on. So let's just find, zoom out here and find a good section. So it looks like <clears throat> this one right here, uh, we're gonna do, we're, you know, we're gonna slice right through this wall and we're gonna look at it, okay? So we're gonna go now to A-4.4 and we're gonna look at detail A5, all right, so Detail A5 is right here, and so we're looking now at a wall section, and it says it here, wall section, gym, and community area, all right? So uh, one thing we want to note is that you can see from the floor, there's the outside, the inside, the gym, because there's the wood floor. It says it right there. Let me zoom in if you can't see. Okay, depressed slab elevation, coordinate with wood floor manufacturer. That's another important note. This is a depressed slab. That means that it's not level with all the rest of the building. The reason it's depressed is the same reason that the, uh, the floor mat was depressed because this has a certain thickness to it and it's an actual assembly. You know, they don't just glue this typically. They don't just glue uh wood to the floor in a gym it kind of has some bounce with it so it's an assembly uh that they put together so they do require a certain thickness there uh but here you can see that this goes all the way up to the roof and we can even see the elevation to the top this this means top of icf slash masonry so this is the top elevation of of the building pretty much is at 32 feet Again, there's that symbol that we've been seeing, and what that means, if you haven't noticed by now, is it means an elevation <clears throat> of some sort. So, we're not going to spend too much time on this, but you can see that this wall, this exterior wall type, consists of four inches of NOM, that stands for nominal masonry veneer. All right, so there's your masonry veneer right there. That's your typical bricks, and then you have a... a, a, a <laughs> Uh, inch and a half an inch and a half of 
airspace. That is that little slot. Let's zoom in a little bit more. All right. You can also see that there's a there's something right there. These are the brick ties, I believe. So you can see that there as well. But um, you know, that's uh, not a big deal. So fluid applied air barrier, moisture barrier uh, is not ever going to be this thick. It's just a layer. All right. So the the insulated concrete form is going to start here and is going to go there. So uh, these um, what would you call these checkerboard? I mean, not you know, what I mean, so these are going to be the um, the insulation and then you've got 10 inches of concrete right there and the concrete forms in there the insulated concrete forms and then you have um, you know the other uh, insulation so it's, it's sort of like rigid insulation this is EPS insulation and then on the the the, the interior layer you have 5 8 inch abuse resistant gypsum board all right so let's go back now all right so uh back here you can see that there is also painted wall graphics painted wall graphics i don't know why it says painted wall graphics it's actually they're, they're talking about the floor painting here this isn't on the wall i don't know what they mean by that but um so there's indicating that this is all going to be so you have to if you're an estimator like me and you were take you know you were quantifying this project you would even have to look for uh, someone to do the striping this is what this is called the striping in the gym and it's not going to be the painter in most cases it could be the guy that is installing the wood floor on the gym and you know whether they uh, hire someone to do it under a contract with them as a subcontractor or something uh, then that's up to them but um, with the quotes that I look at they will normally include like an option or something like that uh, to do the striping in the gym but you know what <clears throat> I think I want to break this uh, little thing series here up because I don't want to just go too long on one thing because there is a lot to get into so if you have time, just look at part two and three and however many other videos there are of this and, um, uh, you know, drop a comment if you have some questions that I didn't answer. Uh, but for now, we will uh, pause and come back um, with a fresh set of eyes and, uh, you know, see what else we can learn. All right. Peace.